I want you to picture a day where there's no more physical media, where there's no more physical games coming out, no more physical movies. What sort of world would that look like? Now, it may seem far-fetched. Hey, physical media is always going to be there. I'm always going to be able to play Banjo-Kazooie. I'm always going to have that available. But what if it's not always available? For the past two decades, Banjo-Kazooie has been locked to mainly Xbox in the Rare Classics, and it has been the Microsoft version. Now, we have seen a return to this form that was on the Nintendo 64 through Nintendo Switch Online. They have brought the rights to that game and put the Nintendo 64 logo back in there, essentially the version that was on the N64. That is available on Behind Us Paywall. You have to pay for a subscription to access that. But I want to talk about this whole trend of getting rid of all physical, of we don't need that old thing anymore. Because believe it or not, a lot of games don't get updated. A lot of games may need to be played through an emulator. It, come, it becomes very hard beyond a certain point to get some of these games. Like, let's just pull any random Nintendo 64 title off the shelf. South Park. I don't think that's ever had an updated version on a modern console. Now you might think, oh, South Park, we got that new South Park Stick of Truth game or whatever. But I'm talking about the original, I'm talking about that one, the N64 version. Now, everyone's aware that Nintendo's going after a lot of emulators. I mean, look, it is their legal right to do so, but it's a very scary time in gaming and in like movies in general, because sometimes you don't always have the hardware to play this. Now, I know there's an HD N64 coming out. I know everyone on YouTube is talking about that thing. But what happens when you just don't have access to stuff like that? What happens when you want to play it the original way it was intended? On the original hardware it was intended for? This is where it becomes a problem. And you might say, oh, but that's, that's not the case. There's still physical games coming out and I'll have it all on a hard drive. Well, I want you to do a little test for me tonight or today, wherever, wherever you're watching this at. Everyone around the world watches my videos, so I know US watch them a lot and I know UK watch them a lot. And I know Canada watch too. I know New Zealand, and I'm trying to increase my foothold in my home country, Australia, but I don't think Australians really care to listen to an Australian talk. <laughs> but try to find WWE 2K22. I want you to try to find that on a store. Now, it might be on Steam, it might be on something. I'm sure you say, oh, I have that installed. But I'm talking about they will not sell this to you if they can help it, because it's not on the PlayStation Store. I don't even believe it's on the Xbox Store. Because they've got the new game. They've got 2K24. So why would they need this old version? I mean, this is an old, outdated version. We don't want you to have that. We want you to have the new game. This is the best that looks. You don't want to have that old game. But preservation is a big thing of this. Preservation is a part of gaming. And, I mean, imagine if they updated Mario Brothers every year, every year, every year. Now you might say, oh, but they do new Mario games every year. That's the same thing, isn't it? No, it isn't. You can still go back and play the NES version of Mario Brothers. I think it's available on Switch Online, I believe so. It's behind the subscription wall. But what happens if they kept updating that over and over and over and over and over and over? Well, then you get something that doesn't even resemble the original. As I've said many times, there's this game over here, The Last of Us, that has been remastered twice already. This came out in the PS3 generation. It got a remaster, then it got a remake. What's next generation? They're going to remaster the remake, and then after that, they're going to remake it again? Like... Where does it stop? And I get people don't care about this. I get people are just like, I just don't care. I just want to play the game in the best form I can. And as long as it looks good, I'm happy. That's okay if you want to feel like that. That's fine. But a lot of these games now are a product of their time. And to play them through like even an emulator ruins the original experience. Like I can get Frogger out right here. I bought this one recently. It's got someone's name on this. It originally belonged to Lisa Todd. So there you go, Lisa Todd. Shout out if this is your original Frogger cartridge. But <laughs> you know what I mean? This is the type of stuff where it's like, yes, this is the way it was intended to be played. And yes, I get that not everyone has an Atari. I only got lucky because I came past one of those Atari Plus models that came out, the Atari 2600 Plus. I got lucky and bought that. And then I picked up a bunch of games to play on it. But it's not always accessible to everyone. It's, it's a bit of a niche market. And what happens if you just want to play Frogger? You're not going to run out and buy an Atari just to play one game. I mean, sure, people say, I would. 
but the average consumer isn't. So what are you left with? You're left with no way to play that version of Frogger. And you might say, but there's new versions of Frogger I can play on my iPhone. <laughs> it is not the same. And this is what I've been saying for a while. We are becoming too reliant on this system of convenience. And I'm so annoyed that we're just going blindly towards it. it. Yes, it is convenient to have all the games on a subscription, all the games available on Nintendo Switch Plus, or have it all on PlayStation Plus, whatever their deluxe service is, have it on Game Pass, whatever. I understand the service is there, it's more convenient. You have more at your fingertips, but what do you really own? What happens if they say, you know what? GoldenEye. We don't want people to play this GoldenEye anymore. We've remastered it with... Uh, Daniel Craig, so we've got the Daniel Craig version of it there. You can play that version, can't you? That's the version that you want to play. And it, it feels like the original, it's close enough. Well, you don't want that. You want to play the version you grew up on. And we're seeing this, you might think it's far-fetched, like, hey, at least we can play it on the Switch Online. It's there. Yes, that version is there. But where's Pokemon? Where is Pokemon Gold? Where is Pokemon Yellow? Where is Pokemon Blue and Red? Where are all the original Pokemon games on there? And I am, I've been playing Arceus, the uh, new Pokemon game. I've been enjoying that game. I've got also Let's Go Pikachu ready to go when I'm ready to play that. But I don't want to play a remake. I mean, I will check it out. I mean, it seems like it's a faithful representation. I do want to check out the remake. Don't get me wrong on that. I will check it out. But it's not going to replace my nostalgic memories of playing on a Game Boy and being like, yeah, this is awesome. And then staying up all night playing Pokemon Blue, you know, on Pokemon Red. It's not going to replace that experience. And yes, while they do have versions of like Pokemon trading card game and that on the Switch Online, the Pokemon versions I grew up on are not available right now anywhere, legally. I mean, I could buy them, try to buy some overpriced copy on eBay, but they're not available anywhere. And given that Nintendo are going after emulators, there's, no, there's not even that method to go after anymore. So essentially there is no way at the moment, if you were getting into emulation right now in 2024, there is no way to play Pokemon Red, Blue, and Yellow, and Gold, and Silver, and Crystal. And then if you want to go into the advanced games or whatever, there is no way to play those. Not even on Switch Online. That's not even on Switch Online. They're essentially erased titles at this point. Do you get what I'm saying? And people are so like, oh, well, I'm okay. I, I'll just play Convenience. I, I'll just play the new Pokemon games. I'm cool. If that's your mentality, that is fine. You you do your thing, champ. But I just think we are going way too lightly towards this. And we should be holding to account preservation. Not so much intellectual property. Now, I understand copyright intellectual property. I understand all that stuff. I understand it's Nintendo's legal property or the, the Pokemon company, which Nintendo partly owns. The Pokemon company own the intellectual property to those Pokemon games but they need to be made available to the public. They need to be made available under a preservation act or something that, hey, even in a museum or something like, yes, you can get them through eBay and that, I get that, they are collectible. But there needs to be some sort of preservation for future generations. I mean, I get, we get annoyed with film when it's stuff like Star Wars, where over here, we have the original trilogy. So number one wasn't even A New Hope, but you know, you have, essentially Star Wars 1977, then you have Empire and also Jedi. But throughout the years, there's been so many changes to those where it doesn't even feel like you're watching the same movie anymore. It feels like you're watching a modern adaptation of what was there, but it's not the same movie that people went to the cinemas and seen in 1977. And while I don't think, um, I don't think Disney's suing anyone yet over that, about getting online and remastering them themselves, because there are a lot of people out there who do the specialized and 4K77 and all these other little fan adaptations because the studio is just not doing it. I don't see that as piracy. I don't look at that as piracy. I look at that as preservation. I look at that as the studio is not doing their, their due right to the public of, hey, we have kept the original version available. And while look, there are versions of films that can't be released in the current form. I get it. Like, I think Song of the South had some undertones in that movie that can't be put on Disney Plus or whatever. I get it. That can't be made available for whatever reason. Like, the backlash against that will be so harsh that even Disney don't want to touch it. But outside of that, 
there was nothing wrong with the original Star Wars, in my opinion. Like, the original cuts of Star Wars, they were fine. And if you're nostalgic for those original versions, you're stuck with these versions, because essentially the original versions are erased. But we are going so blindly towards this whole convenience, the, the appeal of convenience. And we are so blindly just looking at it like, oh, well, I can have all my games on a subscription, yeah. But what happens if they pull a golden eye off that service? What happens if they pull whatever? What happens if they pull Perfect Dark or whatever? What happens if they pull any game? What if happens if The Last of Us gets two more remasters and then they erase the PS5 remaster? And then you don't even have the version that was on PS3. I mean, you have a remaster of the version that was on PS3, but you don't have the original PS3 version. And what about... What about Red Dead Redemption? Came out on PC after, what, 14 years? 15 years now? Are you actually seeing the original version of Red Dead? Or are you seeing a new upscale of, this is how we made it look 4K and 60 frames per second, or whatever they, whatever they want to push online? Are you seeing the original version as it was intended, as it was released in 2000 and what, 2009, 2010? Are you seeing the original version? Are you playing it the way it was intended? Or are you seeing a modern take on that title because the studio have said, yeah, well, you know that old game we got sitting in the corner there? Rockstar's just looking at these games where, okay, we've got we to gotta keep people busy while we're building GTA 6. So let's put out Red Dead Redemption for the PC gamers. That'll keep them interested. Uh, what do we have in the back vault there? I mean, they'll remaster everything except GTA 4 at this point. But, I mean, look, why are we so blindly going towards this model? We are so reliant on this system now that essentially you don't own any of this. All of this is out the window. All of this, Vando Kazooie, nah. You have it all on a handheld now. You have it all on your device no matter where you go. But in saying that, you have become reliant on a service. You have become reliant on a subscription. You have become desperate to keep that subscription, I would say. Because it, what happens if that goes offline? What happens if Game Pass goes offline? If you're an Xbox gamer and you have all your games through Game Pass, what are you going to do? I mean, you're relying on that system now. You want to hope you kept some discs around, if you even have a disc drive in your consoles. And that's another thing. I'm going to do in a separate topic in a moment for another video, and you'll see that video in a couple of days, where I'm going to talk about the death of the second-hand market, because that's what they're trying to get rid of. They're trying to wipe out the second-hand market. They're trying to get rid of that, because if you just have to buy the game through their store, they get 100% of the profits, or the split between the studio or whatever, they get, they have to split some with the studio, but they can control it 100%. Oh, you don't, you know that game from that? You, we don't want that to be given to a friend. Remember the PS4 days when there was that whole ad against um, Xbox, where they were like, Xbox needs to check periodically, and then PS4 just won the generation by saying, here's how you share games on PS4. Thanks. <laughs> Remember that ad? And now that's an ancient thought in PlayStation's mind. But, you know, we become so reliant on this subscription model and, hey, we can have convenience, but we forgot what we actually lost. We are forgetting that you are losing the ownership of these games. You are at the mercy of the versions they want to give you. And if they say, hey, we don't want people playing the Pokemon games, we want them to play Let's Go Pikachu because it's a modern remaster and it's a better take on that version. You don't even need the original versions that you're nostalgic for. We've got that version for you. Now, I'm not knocking Nintendo. I think Nintendo have done well by remastering that game. I think I haven't checked it out yet, but I do want to check it out. It's something I want to check out, but not at the cost of erasing the originals. I still want access to the originals. I still want to play the originals. I want to be nostalgic hearing that bike riding, bike riding theme or even like the original Pallet Town theme. Like, you know, I want to hear that. Like, there's so much with that original Pokemon game that just triggers nostalgia for me. And yes, while there is a modern take on it and it'll look better than it ever has, I still like to have the original available. There are reasons why I've went out and bought Dragon Ball Z on just about every format you can imagine. I've got Blu-ray, I've got 4K over to the side. I've got so many different formats, but I keep these things around. Why do I keep these around if I've got a 4K, uh, not 4K, a Blu-ray version of that? Well, it's simply because with this, this is the original broadcast dub, and there are little changes between the broadcast dub and the newer releases. This has the broadcast dub, and this is the version I'm nostalgic for. This is the version I woke up for and watched Cheese TV on, except except on uh, September 12, 2001. That wasn't on that day, and every kid's, like, every kid in Australia has the same thing. September 12, 2001, the day Cheese TV wasn't on, because obviously the world was changing at that point. 
but do you understand what I'm saying? Like, there are so many different things that I'm like, yeah, I will keep this because this is my version that I'm nostalgic for. Yes, I can experience the Japanese version. Yes, I've got the Dragon Boxes. But the version I'm nostalgic for, the version I grew up on, is right there on that disc. That is as close to the version that got broadcast as possible. So I am just a matter of... It's just a matter of having it available to me. And I don't know, people were just like, that's overkill, you should get rid of some of that stuff. Yeah, you should put it all on a Plex server. <laughs> but I'm not going to put it on a Plex server. I'm not going to do it. It is mine. I like the experience. And I like to hold the freaking covers in my hand. I know people don't understand the actual experience of why I should have a DVD and oh, you don't only need the disc, just rip that once and then you can, tr you can chuck that silly thing away, you know, you don't have to have the disc. But I am just so over this whole template of let's just digitize everything and let's just have it on a Plex server and you won't even need to put the disc in the player anymore, you can just stream that off a Plex server. I don't want to stream it off a Plex server. I actually want the physical experience of getting the case off my shelf having a look at the case even, like just turning it around and saying, yeah, that episode, yeah, the one where Trunks shows up and does the fight with Freezer, which I'm sure everyone's watched Dragon Ball Z, it's a 30, 40, 50 year old show at this point, but the one where Trunks cuts up Freezer and, you know, and it's got that badass Trunks theme underneath, you know, I think it's Destruction, I think that's what it was called, uh, Bruce Faulkner, I think it's Destruction, that was the original score, the original title of that song when Trunks is doing that, but yeah, it's just like, I want the experience and I want the experience of grabbing it, looking at it and understanding what's on there, then putting, making the choice to take the disc and put it in my player. I like the experience and I prefer the inconvenience of having a physical media collection. I know it's not everyone's choice, but it's my choice and you don't have to understand it, but it's mine. Anyways, guys, let me know what you think and, um, yeah, watch a video and let me know if, um, let me know what you think of this video down in the comments. Like, are you just sick of hearing about, oh, why can't just put it on a Plex server? You want to back that up to a computer and you can just throw away that silly DVD. Yeah, we'll, we'll see how that works in 50 odd years when all your hard drives have seized and these things still work as long as we've kept them in good condition. Now you might say they, they rot or whatever, but whatever. Jump, watch one of the videos and let me know what you think.